Welcome to 805 Sports Talk. I'm Joe Bailey. Uh, we got the three-man team this week, Elliot Stern and Jacob Rayburn, and this is a, a big week with uh, football, the high school football season starting, and uh, that's going to be a big topic of our show. Also, Carlos Balderas, the Olympic hero from Santa Maria, uh, made a triumphant return to Santa Maria earlier this week on Tuesday. I caught up with him at the Santa Maria airport. Thank you for tuning in. This is 805 Sports Talk. Yeah, so anyone around the Central Coast on Tuesday um, surely heard the news of Carlos Balderas returning from Rio. He made the quarterfinals in the 60 kilogram uh, boxing competition over there in Rio. Um, it was just a crazy atmosphere over there at the airport on Tuesday. Um, the mariachi band was there, um, about 100 family members, fans, and just a bunch of people. And that was actually my first chance to catch up with Carlos and meet him in person. And um, really just uh, what I took away from him was he, he's a real deal. He's a very well-spoken, intelligent, honest kind of kid. Uh, he stepped uh, off the um, off the plane and was immediately greeted by about a hundred people. He stood there for about an hour, taking pictures and you know giving hugs, shaking hands with about every everybody that was there. So that was really cool to see. He finally made some time for us uh, media members. I uh, talked to him for about ten minutes. You know he had some interesting uh, answers. Uh, Oscar De La Hoya might try to sign him to his Golden Boy uh, promotions. He's still not sure if he's going to go pro. He even talked about maybe um, qualifying for, for the Tokyo Olympics in 2020. So uh, it was really interesting to catch up with him and, and kind of feel how and kind of learn how he felt about uh, Rio and everything he kind of experienced over there. Um, so Jose, uh, how was it seeing your brother fight in Rio and you were able to be over there with him? What was the whole experience like? Um, every, everything out there is a learning experience, you know, um, uh, regardless if we would have got medal or, you know, everything is just experience and it's something we can use for the future, you know. Um, how did you feel about the, the quarterfinal match against Alvarez, the Cuban guy? A, a lot of people in, in Santa Maria weren't happy with the decision. Um, do you think it was a fair, a fair decision? How did you feel about that final battle? I don't, I don't think it was a fair decision because, uh, you know, everybody works so hard just for something, you know, and for them to break somebody's dream like that, you know, it's, it's a very bad thing, you know. Okay. Uh, what do you want to say about your brother? You know, um, ha having three bouts out there, there's just a couple of days between each bout. You know, boxers usually go a couple months before fights. Um, you know, what do you want to say about your brother kind of grinding through that and making the quarterfinals? Uh, well, you know, regardless of what, every, anything that happened, you know, I'm happy for my brother, you know, and I'm proud of him. And, you know, everything, um, you know, he worked so hard for this. And, and, and it's just like, like, it's a blessing to know that all the hard work has finally paid off. I hope, I hope when he gets here and he sees all this, you know, it brings joy to him. Uh, what do you think's next for him? Is he gonna go pro? Do you, do you, is yeah, he gonna get well, some more experience? What do you think's next for him? Um, right now, uh, uh, me, my brother, and another friend, Vander, are looking to go professional, you know, and hopefully we can all sign together. Okay. So that's for our future. Okay, and uh, you know, you're a boxer yourself. Does that motivate you at all, seeing your your brother yeah. you know, go to the Olympics? That kind of give you a little extra motivation. I know brothers are competitive as well. And how does that how does that fuel you a little bit? Yeah, well, um, well, it does it does make me work harder, you know, because it's like it's like well, you know when we're training, I'm thinking to myself, how can my little bro train harder than me, you know? So I start training harder, you know, and it pushes us, you know, and it's it's for everything, man. And we play sports and we're on opposite teams just to make things. Um, you were a little worried before going to Rio about the Zika virus and you know just the general thing around Rio. Was it better than you expected out there? What was your overall experience out there in Rio? Uh, Rio was a life-changing experience for me. You know, due to the fact that I'm very young, I could wait another four years and go to Tokyo, or I might just go pro to my people. But um, man, it was a it was a great experience. You know, I'm just happy I was able to experience it with my family who went down. You know, my aunt, my uncle, my cousins, my brother, my grandpa. My grandpa was very sick actually, and he wasn't gonna go. And uh, you know, it was God's will for him to go. So I'm very happy that I was able to experience it with my people. How did you feel about the decision against Alvarez? Do you feel that was on point? A lot of people in Santa Maria thought he won the first, might have took the second. You know, there's a couple possible knockdowns there. How did you feel about how everything turned out against Alvarez? I mean, yeah, a lot of people are saying it was a, it was a very controversial decision. But um, I'm looking forward to uh, to just um, looking over the fight with my dad and my uncle just to see the mistakes that I did wrong. Um, I hope maybe I'll fight him in the future, you know, hopefully. I'm not sure because these Cubans stay amateurs all their life. They're, he was like 30-something, but... Um, I think I did enough to win the decision, to be honest, but, you know, these things happen and I'm not going to complain. I'm just going to uh, go forward, you know. you like fighting without the headgear better? Or? Yeah, a lot better. I got more comfortable with it, too. You just got to be more cautious with uh, the headbutts and elbows and stuff, you know.
you wanted to do this your whole life. For instance, you laced up those gloves at about seven, right? Was it? Ever, I mean, I know you wanted to win the gold, obviously, but I mean, was it everything that you really kind of expected it to be, representing the U.S. and being in the Olympics? Um, finally, coming back home, I realized how much support I had, you know, um, because uh, this whole training camp that I had two, three months, I wasn't really, I was just pretty much locked inside my house. I was in bed all day, resting, training, you know, um, I wasn't really doing much. I really wasn't really going out. And now that I came back home and I come back to this, man, it was it was amazing. What was your highlight for you? What was the best moment, you know, winning your first two bouts? Anything that stands out is probably the best moment for you? Um, probably uh, after after each fight, I would go to where my parents, you know, my, uh, where my family and everybody was staying at, you know, and I was able to celebrate it. And uh, I would call, I would get calls and stuff from family back home saying um, everybody was watching the fight. So that was a big, big thing for me, you know, knowing I got like my family and my whole city behind me. Was there ever a moment where you're just kind of like, you know, Michael Phelps is out there, meet anybody of, you know, famous Olympians where it's kind of, you know, you're a little starstruck at all? Oh, uh, yeah, I was actually hoping to meet uh, a couple of the basketball players, a couple of the famous guys, you know. But um, like my teammate Clarissa Shields told me, she said that. We're all here for the same reason, you know, there's no, nothing better than you, nothing special. We all breathe and, you know, bleed, like, so she said, uh, there's nothing special, really. Girls, did you go to the opening and closing ceremonies at all? Uh, no, I didn't go to the opening ceremony because I had a fight the next day, and it finished at like at 2 in the morning, and I had to wait in like at 6, so, um, and the closing ceremony, I overslept, so I didn't go. Yeah. I heard uh, Oscar De La Hoya might be wanting to get in touch with you, you know, a great Mexican American boxer. You heard anything from Oscar? What would it be like to kind of get a little tutelage from him? Yeah, well, um, I heard that he was trying to sign me and stuff and that okay. he was interested. Um, but that's really up to my dad and my uncles what they want to decide on. Um, I got a, a lot of offers, so I'm just going to wait a little. Like I said, I'm still not sure if I'm going to wait for Tokyo or turn pro. You know, it's just a matter of time, really. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So that should be our last Olympic feature. It was a great run, uh, a couple weeks of the Olympics. Um, Cami Craig from San Inez did win the gold medal in the women's water polo competition as the U.S. dominated Italy. So the Olympics are done with, and uh, we're going to turn our focus to high school football. And Elliot, you got a, a big game this week with um, St. Joseph hosting Sherman Oaks, Notre Dame. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a great way for St. Joe to start the season. They're going to be playing another uh, private school, a Catholic school similar to them, except uh, Notre Dame is much bigger. Uh, the game is going to be here Friday night, uh, 7 o'clock kickoff. I'll be at it. Uh, and we'll have everything for you Friday night online and Saturday morning in your Santa Maria Times. Uh, now, Sh uh, Sherman Oaks, Notre Dame, last year went 3-7, and seven, and they lost three quarterbacks. They had a starter and two uh, backups that played an awful lot. So now they're starting over with a brand new quarterback. Uh, and they play in uh, the tough, really tough mission league uh, and were only able to win one game at it. So you think, well, St. Joe had a great year last year uh, and uh, they went to the playoffs. They had uh, all kinds of star players. They should be able to win this. Now, they did lose Blake Jekylls, their star quarterback, lost some other key players. But uh, they, they've got kids, though, that have a lot of experience. So. Uh, Dino Maldonado, it looks like he's going to step in to be the starting quarterback. Uh, they're going to have C.J. Coles, the area's probably the, one of the premier, if not the premier, wide receiver and defensive back. Uh, he's going to be there to catch the ball, but he's also going to spell Maldonado once in a while on quarterback. So they've got some talent. And you would say, well, a team that went 9-3 went and three last year, including the playoffs, uh, should be able to beat a team that went 3-7. and seven. But then you, you look at some of the things. The CIF this year has changed the way the, the playoff groupings are going to be. Instead of having uh, a northern division, a northwest division where our local schools played, uh, they uh, came up with numbered divisions. And they went over two years of uh, 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 games, scores, uh, strength of uh, opponent. Uh, and uh, they came up with these numerical rankings from one to three hundred to four hundred one. Four hundred one teams are playing eleven man football in the southern section. So then they uh, uh, gave everybody uh, a number. Uh, they worked out a ranking, and um, for some reason, uh, Notre Dame of Sherman Oaks is the number one team in Division Two. 
went three and seven last year, but they're the number one team in Division Two. And Divi you know, they're, they're, now they're going by strength of schedule and and wins and losses. And Division One are, are the powerhouses. And in Division One, uh, Bishop Amat, Sarah, Loyola, Alamany, Chaminade, uh, those are all teams that beat. Notre Dame last year in their Mission League. So Division One is loaded with Mission League teams. The lowest ranked team in, in uh, the Mission League is Crespi, uh, and they're in Division Two with Notre Dame. So according to the CIF's rankings, Notre Dame, even though they have uh, a lot of inexperience in, in key positions, a lot of juniors stepping up for the first time, they, they rank them highly. So. Where do you go? Do you say, well, it's a home game. St. Joe has uh, a lot of experience. Kids are going to be moving up. Some of them are going to be uh, having uh, great senior seasons. Uh, or do you look at the CIF and say, well, the, 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 even though they went three and seven, they got a lot of inexperience. The CIF thinks they're the top team in Division Two, and uh, St. Joe, a school of about 400 kids, is a div in the middle of Division Five. So. The CIF's rankings put uh, Notre Dame I as the stronger team, but I'm thinking they're going to suffer an upset loss in the first week. St. Joe's going to win this game. So I'm thinking it's going to be great. We're going to kick off the season. We're going to have a, it's a, a, a season where uh, St. Joe, Rigetti, Santa Maria, Pioneer Valley all have home games on opening night. It's it's going to be a, a, a crazy weekend to kick off football, but we're going to be at all the games and we're going to have a good time. And we hope you go to some of them, but if you can't, of course, join us uh, here at SantaMariaTimes.com and, of course, in uh, print uh, Saturday morning, Santa Maria Times will have all of that action. Joe? Thanks, Elliot. Um, and there, that's not the only big matchup this weekend, Jacob. Uh, you might have the premier uh, matchup, at least among the people on the Central Coast. You know, we love that Lompoc AG matchup to start the season. That, that's always the best time of year, I think, because it signals the start of the football season and the Braves host a Rio Grande this year. Um, what do you think about that matchup? Yeah, and we're not the only ones excited. Fox agrees as well, and uh, they will be there. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. I am really looking forward to it. Uh, because this game will determine a lot about how the seasons go for these two teams. And uh, there's just so much that stands out. This is, in many ways now, uh, a team that, uh, a Lompoc team that Toa Tawa is leading. Whereas for Royal Grande, they welcome back um, a leader at the most ex important position on the field, Sawyer May, third year varsity quarterback, the best quarterback, I think, without too much debate really on in the Central Coast area and uh, so for me let's get right to it I think what it comes down to is last year Lompoc's defense gave up big yards in their biggest games of the season and they couldn't stop to run they lose at Thousand Oaks not because Thousand Oaks had Max Gilliam a scholarship quarterback to Cal but because Perry Martin the third ran up the middle and up the middle and up the middle some more and this year it should be a different and bigger line for Lompoc on both sides of the ball. So question number one, can Isaac Black, an, a returning all-league player, and Trenton Carter, who had 80 tackles last year for St. Joseph, can they get to Sawyer May? And if they can, then that makes life a whole lot tougher for Sawyer, who has to find out what is life without Bradley Mickey and Alex Checky who are being replaced by James Gomet and Tyler Ro uh, Rocha at running back. And so in many ways, it's a new life for AG and Tom Goosen as to what their offense looks like. Can Sawyer get enough time to get the ball to Matt Sill? On the reverse side of that, Toa Tawa is going to be running the ball a lot more this season, which means he gets to meet Sam Ness a lot on the field in one of the premier running back versus linebacker matchups in the entire area. Uh, you can go to this game and pretty much pick which battle you want to watch from play to play and probably be able to pick a different one to watch for an entire possession of each team. It should be really exciting. Um, right now, if I had to pick one, and this is really tough, I feel like this is the closest thing to a coin toss in the area this Friday. Um, I think Lompoc at home has the size and the defense 
to get to Sawyer when Sawyer is trying to break in so many new guys he's trying to get the ball to. Um, I think it's a close game. I think Lompoc gets more than 30 points. I think Lompoc gets 31. I think AG uh, gets 17. And uh, so, yeah, that's my first prediction of the season. And, uh, <laughs> and it's a doozy. Yes, it is. <laughs> and if I'm wrong, I hope I'm wrong, and it's still a great game. And I'm wondering how you guys feel about the rest of the matchups we have. Going. Yeah, um, you know, no disrespect to my game, which is a, obviously a, a big game. It's going to be our uh, webcast game of the week is Napomo at Pioneer Valley. But um, probably if I had my choice of any game, it might be that one because I've always loved the Lompoc AG matchup, and that one's going to be just amazing. Before the season started, I was thinking like Toa Tawa versus Sam Ness would probably be like the two best linebackers in the area playing against each other, but Toa's more of a safety this year, so, but it'll still be great with Toa running the ball at Sam Ness. And I think you did a great job breaking that game down, and, and your, prob your prediction is probably going to be on point. It's, it's a really good prediction. Um, we'll see if Lompo can score that many points uh, with the new quarterback, uh, you know, so that's going to be interesting. Yeah. Torrey Sims is no longer there. Uh, but I think that, that Lompoc roster looks a whole lot better. Like you said, Trenton Carter's there. Um, I guess Jelani Henderson is going to be over there. Yep. Um, and you mentioned Toa being more of a safety. I think you just named the guy who's allowing him to play more at safety. I think yeah. Jelani will be in at linebacker a lot. Um, they also got Greg Lewis, I think, from Rigetti. Yes. Um, so I think that Lompoc does, lo does lose Richard Foster and Torrey Sims, but they do have a little bit of a different look this year, and it should be... Yeah. A, a, an interesting Lompoc team. But um, kind of moving on to my matchup, um, you know, Pioneer Valley hosting Napoma, that's always a great matchup as well. I think talking to Napoma coach Tony Dodge, he said that Napoma always hosts PV as long as they've been playing, you know, varsity football. So that's always a great matchup as well. And it kind of gets overlooked a little bit. So I think it's great that we are broadcasting that game Friday night, um, 6.45 p.m. pregame show and then kickoff at 7. Um, you know, that's an interesting matchup. I, I really can't call it right now, but if I had to, I think Napoma is going to come out on top. They do lose a lot of pieces, but, uh, you know, they made the, the semifinals last year and they won a, a, a CIF championship the year before that. So Napomo does have some success and they do have some pieces back. Um, I think it, I don't know if it's going to be high scoring, um, you know, like um, Matt Garcia is going to be taking over his quarterback over at PV. Um, Leo Partita Ruiz is a key player. But I think PV does lose quite a bit. Um, I don't know if they can keep up with Napoma, who I think is going to be pretty solid this year. I'd probably say 24 to 14 maybe for Napomo in that one. But I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a good matchup and a, and a fun one to, to broadcast. I think Tony Dodge has done a really good job with that Napomo team since he took it over a few years ago. And he had a pretty good uh, basis when he started. But uh, he's done a really good job. And even though he's lost some key players, He's, he's really got his act together. He's impressed me over the years uh, with how well he, he can coach. And Pioneer Valley's now uh, building again. Uh, their coach is only in his second year, uh, and he needs to you know build some consistency and get his stamp on the program. So I think this is a chance for Napomo to just steal a win. Uh, and it's going to take Pioneer Valley another year or so to get to where they want to be. So I'm seeing Pioneer Valley having a bit of a rocky season, at least the non-league part of it. Uh, and uh, I'm thinking Napomo is going to come out on top. Well, what is the saying that th uh, three is a trend? You know, this is the third possible, you know, third straight year of a really good Napomo team, a semifinal last year, a championship two years ago. Um, and just talking to their players, this is a group of guys who want it to be like that. Who, who want to establish themselves as uh, no longer surprise, this is what you expect. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm putting my trust in them. I, I, I came away confident based on their confidence. So I, I, I liken the Napomo feel. Well, they see what uh, their neighbors to the north, uh, Tom Goosen and his Arroyo Grandy kids have done over the years. Uh, and that's what they want to establish there. And, uh, you know, Lompoc, is an, uh, a program that is always at the top. Uh, there are other teams that are not, and the Pomos come from uh, getting clobbered all the time because it jumped into league play when it was a new school way too soon to now building traditions. And But I think they want to be, I don't think they would admit to being Arroyo Grande South, but they want that kind of tradition, that kind of 
program, and they're working hard. They're really working hard to get it. They're, the kids, when we had our media day, those kids impressed me. They uh, and we've seen them a couple of years now. So, but they they know to, uh, Tony Dodge's system. Uh, they work in it. They like it. So, uh, I'm set, thinking the Pomo's going to have another successful season. Uh, yeah. yeah um, they got JJ Ramirez back, who's a key player for them, and Michael Jordan, who played as a sophomore on the championship team is supposed to be back, so he might be a key running back for them. And Spencer Poole or um, Nick Robledo was kind of battling out for the quarterbacking position. But I think, like everyone was saying here, that Napomo is going to be solid. So um, not, I wouldn't be surprised if Napomo comes out on top Friday night against PV. But PV is looking for the third straight playoff appearance. So, you know, don't definitely don't count them out. And, and they're in a good league now. You know, they don't have to be in the Pac-7 or Pac-5, what, you know, in the years past. So they, I think they can make another shot at make another run at the playoffs um a team another team who definitely wants to to get back in the playoffs is Rigetti and um yeah. you know they ho host Bishop Diego Friday night at home uh, last year I think they played um three or four straight road games to start the season as I think they got their new track in last year and all that stuff was going on so they had to kind of start out on the road but this year they get to play three of their first four at home I think so they host Bishop Diego on Friday night last year, they lost 13 to nine on the road at at Bishop Diego. I think they played at Santa Barbara City College last year. I think they were up late, six to zero in the fourth quarter, or something like that, and ended up losing 13 to nine. So I'm sure Rigetti wants to kind of avenge what happened last year. And I think some people are kind of overlooking them. Um, you know, I think Rigetti can can put a solid season together. It's tough in that league, but I wouldn't be surprised if they if they can you know maybe even out, go two and two in league or you know something like that. You know. And, and have a decent season, and I think they can make a run at the playoffs. Ed Herman there is good. Chase Artopius is is developing as a young quarterback. Um, you know, John Well Laron's there. I think they can be. I think they can put a decent season together, and I think they are being overlooked a little bit. And I'm sure they want to get the 2016 2016 season rolling with the win at home Friday night. It would be incredible. I mean, it would be amazing if they pulled it off against Bishop Diego, which is a team that has really high expectations for this season after a really strong season last year. Um, if if they compete really well with Bishop Diego, I know no coach ever wants to admit to moral victories, and there's a there's good reasons for why you don't. Um, but man, if they compete against Bishop Diego, I. I will be really encouraged about how this season is going to go for the Warriors, and uh, so so that will be an interesting test for them. While at the same time, if they struggle against Bishop Diego, there's not many other teams on their schedule they have to face that are like that. You know, the Artopia has uh, uh, grown as a quarterback, and so I see a lot of uh, good things from him this year. Uh, they threw him to the Wolves last year, and uh, he fought through it and he did a pretty good job but now he knows what is expected he knows what a team like Bishop Diego is going to bring in, in its defense and I, I think that year is going to benefit him greatly I see this as a really close game again uh, the question in my mind is will Rigetti's defense wear down in the fourth quarter will they go through the same kind of thing they had last year but it's going to be a really good test and we'll see it'll set them up for their whole season if they can, you know, Ed Herman's been there for a while now as the head coach. Uh, he's a good coach, uh, and he's got a lot of experience at the high school and the college level. Uh, and uh, his systems are now in place, and I think this is the first year that they may be able to cash in on it. Uh, this is a toss-up to me. Uh, Bishop Diego always has good teams, or mostly has good teams. I've seen him have a couple down years. But, uh, I, you know, I'm thinking Artopius and the, and the other guys that uh, uh, had, had to battle through a tough season last year are going to use that to their benefit and uh, build on that. So I'm thinking good things for Rigetti, but it's going to be a close game. And I haven't flipped the coin just yet uh, to see who's the winner. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. And our, I think our predictions will be up online of all the games uh, Friday by Friday morning, maybe a little bit earlier, but definitely check out all our predictions on, uh, on my blog. Um, so check that out. We'll have all the predictions on all the Central Coast teams. And, and we want to talk a little bit more. We haven't hit on Santa Maria yet, uh, who hosts uh, San Luis Obispo. You know, they, they get to start the season at home. It's kind of interesting that they host slow because there's little similarities between those two programs. You know, 
people I think sh expect a little more out of slow than what they've been producing. They were running the triple option for a couple of years, but they switched away from that. You know, they had a, they've gotten a new coach in Santa Maria has a, has a, a newer coach in Dan Ellington who's in his second year. So I think that's an interesting matchup, and it might be a little more even than people would assume at first glance. I think Santa Maria is on an upswing of sorts. You know, don't get you know carried away too much, but I think. They are headed in the right direction with some of the pieces they do have. That school generally has some solid athletes. You know, if you look at the basketball team, the baseball team, they are trending upwards. And they got a nice core of young, solid athletes. So I think Santa Maria can, can hang with slow. I wouldn't be surprised if they pull it off, but you know, that, that might be a bit, a bit too much too soon. But you know, I, I might go with the Saints. If I had to pick a, a winner in that one, I'd go with the Saints, and I think they can do it. You know. Um, maybe 17-10. I'm not sure what SLO has this year. I haven't really researched them too deeply, but I know Santa Maria does have some pieces. Blake Truitt might be in there at quarterback. Isaiah Garcia is a solid running back. Jonathan Ramos is just an all-around stud. Love that guy, Elijah Fisher. We met him at Media Day, kind of tight end guy. I think they do have some pieces. Um, Jesus Pacheco is also there. So I wouldn't be surprised if Santa Maria gives SLO all they can handle Friday yeah. night. Yeah, that'd be I'd, I'd love that story. That'd be that'd be uh, great. And I think what it comes down to is is um, they have a whole off season to get ready for a game that will announce how much they've progressed. Um, and it, it's going to be an interesting test of how well Dan Ellington's gotten these guys to all buy in. I mean, during the off season, everything sounds great. The progress is amazing. Now they get to have slow come down, San, San Luis Obispo versus Santa Maria. You know, here we go. Well, Dan and I had a long talk about this game and the whole season, and um, he had a, a, a full year program. He had kids in the weight rooms. He had uh, uh, kids coming to him all winter and spring. Uh, they had a summer program. Uh, and he's encouraged the uh, now because in his second year there, you re remember he, he's coached for 30 years, and uh, he was a, a successful coach at Pioneer Valley, and he, he's a teacher, so he, he was teaching at Santa Maria, so he decided that it made more sense for him to go to coach at Santa Maria, uh, where he's teaching. So he went, uh, he, he took over that program a last year, and the the kids now uh, understand his system. They understand his offense. They understand his defense. Uh, they've worked together in the off season, and uh, he's got the team morale at a really high point. Uh, San Luis Obispo's gone through a couple of rocky seasons, and, and Ellington thinks he can beat these guys outright and not steal a game from them. And I'm, I'm agreeing with Joe. I think San Luis Obispo is is ripe for the picking, and, and Santa Maria can get themselves off to a start. And I, I you know, I don't know. Dan Ellington told me that he nothing less than a league championship will do. Well, he's in a pretty tough league, you know, this, uh, this Northern League uh, has, uh, uh, who's in there, Napomo? Mission Prep, Napomo, uh, Mission Campus Prep, in yeah, and, and you can't discount any of those teams, but uh, he thinks they can win that league championship, and I'm not sure they can, but I think they're going to win a whole lot more than they have been winning, and uh, this is the, the way to get it started. If he can get these kids a win, if they can get themselves a win in week zero, uh, I think they could go a long way to uh, rebuilding the program that we haven't seen a, a winning team since uh, Jim Doyle was the coach mm -hmm. many years ago before he went over to be the first athletic director when they opened up Pioneer Valley High School. Well, Santa Maria, and it would be great, and Santa Maria is also not the only team looking for a really good positive start to their season after last year being a bit disappointing. We got one team making the trip all the way to Bakersfield. Uh, Cabrillo is going to be playing Frontier and uh, no dancing around the fact that last season was really tough for Cabrillo. They won one game. Uh, Frontier is not one of the top Bakersfield teams. They have a chance. Um, it will be incredibly difficult. Um, Cabrillo's defense was better than any of their stats showed last season. And that had a lot to do with the fact that there were multiple games where, unfortunately, Cabrillo's offense had more three and outs than first downs. And they just could not get anything going. Cody Perry is an incredibly rugged running back, but he would carry the ball 30 times and not crack 100 yards. Um, this time, Cody Perry is going to be running behind Blake Truitt, who's been moved to guard, and they want him to pull and get in front of 
of Cody and whoever is at linebacker and is trying to get to Cody, they have to try to get through Blake first. Uh, uh, Jake first, not Blake. Um, Blake is... Yeah. Blake is a much smaller person who plays for Santa Maria. <laughs> yeah, Jake, Jake Tortolot. Tortolot. All right. <laughs> and uh, Blake Truitt probably would do pretty well at offensive line because he's a tough kid. But Jake Tortolot, pulling guard. So it's going to be good, though, because they get to go and challenge themselves. They get to go to a, new, uh, a different place. Like I said, Frontier is not one of the top Bakersfield teams. Um, there was a couple of Bakersfield teams that made the Fresno Bees preseason top yeah. 20, but not them. But I. I do think um, Lompoc hosted a home and home with Frontier maybe three years ago. Frontier came to Lompoc, Lompoc beat them. Mm -hmm. Lompoc then traveled to Bakersfield to play Frontier, and Frontier beat Lompoc. And I think that was the game that snapped their 30 something game winning streak. So there is some interesting mm -hmm. history there. I think that was a much better Frontier team, but I think Frontier is kind of like right in the middle yes. of Bakersfield. You know, they're not down there. They're not up here with like Bakersfield High or maybe Centennial or you know some of the Clovis schools, but they're you know it's going to be a challenge for Cabrillo for oh, sure. Oh yeah, it's going to be a challenge, but um, like you mentioned, it's it's not like they're going to Bakersfield and having to put up themselves against uh, Liberty or anything like that. Yeah. Um, and uh, so here's here's hoping we'll we'll see if Cabrillo's made some strides. And we can't uh, forget about another team that's on the road is Sandy Inez um, starting the season at San Marcos. Um, and I think that's the game I'm most confident about. I don't know why, but I'm, I'm, I'm just sure that San Inez is going to win that one. They started the season last year 7-0. and um, So I think they can get off to another hot start this year. You know, that's not a, a too tough of a challenge over there at San Marcos. Um, it's, not a, it's not a gimme game, but I'm sure Josh McClure is going to have his guys ready to go. Uh, Mike McCoy is going to be over there at quarterback. Uh, Gabe Prendergast is going to be a, a stud at wide receiver. Uh, Travis Reeland was just amazing last year at linebacker. So if I had to pick, you know, any game that I knew for sure of the outcome, I think San Inez is going to win that one. I think they're going to be win it pretty handily. I just don't know why. I don't know why I'm so high on on San Inez, but I just like 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 what they're doing over there, and I like how I, they played last year. I will say that I think uh, Gabe Prendergast is one of the best athletes in the entire area, um, and he proves it in two different sports. And I think he's he's further he was further along in baseball last year, um, but. I'm really interested in, in what a uh, you know, 6'2 rangy kid can do at receiver and corner. And uh, it's going to be interesting. So they have talent. We'll see how it comes together. And Mike McCoy is a really good young athlete. Uh, I first met him when he was about 10 years old. He won a national punt, pass, and kick, NFL punt, pass, and kick championship. And he's just improved year in and year out. Uh, and he's he's going to be a real team leader for them. So I, I just look for them to have another good start. Uh, let's see what happens when they get into league play because they could take their lumps to some bigger schools that they're playing against now. But uh, still, they're always an entertaining team, and I look for uh, big things out of Mike McCoy. I think he's a real leader for that club. Definitely. So those are all the matchups that we're going to talk about this week. Um, if you want to see all our predictions for all the Central Coast teams, you know, all the way up to Tascadero and Paso Robles, um, check out my blog, The Daily Bailey, uh, Friday morning, Friday afternoon. We'll get those predictions up for you. Um, thank you guys for tuning in once again to 805 Sports Talk. Um, we got big plans for this football season. Everything starts Friday night with our live broadcast of the uh, Napomo at Pioneer Valley game. We're covering, a, you know, a plethora of games this Friday night and then every every week of the seasons for, for 10 weeks. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And thank you guys for, uh, for watching our 805 Sports Talk. And we're going to continue to have uh, football-heavy shows throughout the, the fall season. And remember, it's all online right here at SantaMariaTimes.com. Live games, this uh, 805 Sports Talk every Friday. Uh, and uh, every night online, we'll have the latest in high school sports, not just uh, the football, but everything. We've got tennis, golf volleyball, cross country. There's a lot of things that are about to begin. Uh, so it'll all be there uh, online at SantaMariaTimes.com and in print uh, in the Santa Maria Times and Lompoc Record and the other publications of Lee Central Coast newspapers. So join us in print, online, and of course join us next week for our next edition of 805 Sports Talk. So until then, thanks for being with us and we'll see you next Friday. Whew.